Okay. The tech crew says I can, we can begin. Let's We begin. We pray. Lord God, thank you for this day. Thank you for blessing us with all the blessings you give to us. The blessings that we see and feel and touch us and we appreciate. The ones that you help us see and we give you praise and glory and thanks. And Lord, it's hard to thank you for the blessings that we don't quite see as blessings yet. Lord, help us this day as you come to us, as you give us time to set aside and to listen, for you to speak, for you to talk and teach us and tell us of your love, your grace, your comfort, your power, your strength, and how you are our God and we are your people. Bless us this day in your word, in your truth, and at your table and as we celebrate as your people. And all God's people pray. Amen. Our theme for today is we're created, we're lost, and then we're born again. And as we see today, it's interesting how the people who set together the readings for the church year, they put together the beginning passage starting in Genesis in the very beginning. And and it talks about how God spoke in the beginning. God spoke His Word, and He spoke into existence those first things that helped gave form and substance to the world. See, the world was there void and without form and empty, and the Spirit was hovering over the deep waters. And there, before creation started, God started with this mass, and that's what the Word says. In the beginning, the world was formless and empty, and it was dark, and the God Spirit hovered over the depths of the waters. And it was just there, but nothing was there. It was from that beginning that God says that was the beginning. And from that time, in that situation, God turned it into something. And the very first thing God created was light. God spoke and light came to be. Now I don't know if I know I don't know if you know this, but for the first three days before God created the sun and the moon and the stars, there was light, there was darkness the day. And that's what it started by today. There was there was daylight, there was evening. There was morning the first day. And for three days it happened that there was light, dark, and light again, and that counted and that counted the days before the sun was made. Isn't that interesting? Because the light that we get in this world, it comes from our sun. But yet God says before there was the sun, God made light and put it together, and made darkness, and called it darkness, and he called the light, light. Then he started making things. He gave form and substance to this world, so that now in this world it would have its substance. On the next two days, God made the sky, and in the sky he made the water above the sky and the water below the sky on the earth. And that's what was made. And was made into a substance and a location. And then from that, the next day, God made the ground appear and vegetation. Now everyone says, usually they say, well, that guy is as old as dirt. And I always chuckle because I say, no, dirt isn't the oldest thing water. Water was here first. Then God made ground appear. And then when God made the ground appear, and then on that same day, he created vegetation. Now, before the vegetation started growing and producing, there was nothing going on. There was no water. And so that God used it through springs. But then in that place,
place, God decided to build a garden to put man in it. So in the east, God created a garden with beautiful trees and shrubberies. And so from there, there was all that vegetation that was already made. Then he put Adam into it. And he brought all the animals. No suitable helper was found. Finally, God says, I'll make a helper suitable for him. He took a rib from Adam. He made woman. He brought the woman to him. I like what it said. I never realized it before. At last, Adam says, finally, finally. This is woman. She came from me. Flesh of my flesh, bone of my bone. Now he's happy. That was the beginning. And it all happened because God spoke it into existence. And from that, this is where we have the world and everything in it. But we also hear the story about how Adam and Eve fell into disobedience, how they did what they were told not to do. And God said, when you eat of this tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you will die. And they were tricked, deceived, duped into eating of that tree. And God, being a just God, he sent them out of the garden. And Adam and Eve and their children felt the sentence of the curse. And every one of us, to be born as human, experiences the sentence of that judgment that time a long time ago and God spoke again this time after cursing Satan cursing the woman and cursing the man God said her descendant will crush Satan's head Satan will strike his heel singular masculine Satan will bite his heel, but he would crush Satan's head. You see, God's love is so deep, so powerful, so strong. He did not want humanity to exist without fellowship and connected to him. And since the fall, you and I fall. We are lost. After we were created as humanity in the image of God, we lost that image. And when we lose that image, we lose who we are, our identity, our purpose, our worth, our value. It's lost. And we live in this world being born under the curse. But then again, God speaks. And he spoke a word today. We gather here. Some of us are here fully. Some of us are just barely here, but we're here. And if you realized it or not, if you focused enough, every one of us has something to be thankful for today. Every one of us gets to leave church today with God doing an amazing thing today. Because he spoke and he said, I forgive you all your sins. God's already put his name on you. He's already blessed you, us. He used my voice but I listened today because I wrote the sermon yesterday and I wrote it in the sermon notes. Hey, people, rejoice. God has claimed you and named you and blessed you with his name. He has forgiven you all your sins. He has made you born again. God spoke and used simple words to have us be born again. And we could be sitting there going, born again, what? What is he talking about? Born again. You know, well, it talked about Jesus' baptism, it talked about creation, and then it talked about in Romans how we are dead to sin, alive to God. Yeah, I hear you, Pastor. I just don't know how real that is with me. I believe it, but I don't know if I really understand it. 
I'm thinking anyways. That would be me sitting there going, really? Yeah, I, I believe I'm dead to sin, alive to God. But you know what? My brain says otherwise. My brain says, yeah, I wasn't quite dead to sin yesterday when I said this. When I thought that. When I did this. And I don't feel so clean conscience. I'm dealing with guilt. I'm dealing with shame. I'm dealing with unworthiness. Did I hit anybody yet? Feeling a little unworthy, a little shameful, a little guilty. That's God's word. That's God's truth. And because we live in this sinful flesh, we do daily battle with our guilt, our thinking, our shame, our unworthiness. Naomi had surgery. She hasn't been she hadn't been doing very well. She's still not doing very well. Um, she had gallbladder surgery. She's still nauseated, still not eating that much. I feel for her. I hurt for her. I struggle for her. I pray for her. I had a chance to sit with her and visit with her on the couch with Laura. And I finally said it. I said, hey, Naomi, since you're here and you're not feeling too well, do you mind if I ask you a few questions? Yeah, sure, go ahead. You know how kids are, right? She's sitting on the couch, kind of leaning up their f in her blanket. She thanks you ladies for the little quilt blanket they get you the lap blanket they gave her and she's got her phone watching tv and she's on the phone and she's doing her thing and so i start asking her questions and i said to her i said naomi i just want to share with you what i feel and, and see and think and that is i really i'm really concerned for you because i just i just the person i saw who would cry if your bigger brother didn't get up in time to bring you to church in Sunday school and you would cry and you'd come in late running in or sitting next to mom or me or another member and sobbing because you were missing church in Sunday school. I, I don't see that anymore. It's like you really don't care anymore that you're on your own. I'm, I'm concerned that that you don't have God walking with you anymore. And then I'm going, okay, what's going to happen? She going to close down? She going to shut me off? And she got off her phone a little bit, put her feet down, leaned in and saying, Dad, I'm on my own journey now. I've got to figure this out for myself. I have to, I have to figure out if I want to believe what I've been told to believe. I said, okay. Cool. She goes, yeah? I go, yeah. Thank you for being honest and telling me where you're at. She goes, okay. Well, that's where I'm at right now. That's what I'm going to be dealing with. I go, okay. I didn't push it any further. Now well, maybe just a little bit more. And I shared with her, I said, only just a little bit about when we start to go searching for God on our own, we're going to get in trouble. We're going to get lost. We're going to get stuck. We're going to get tripped up. We're going to get blocked off. Because that's the part of we, on our own, with our own thinking, on our own ways, we're like sheep and we wander away. And I said, okay, I want to listen to you more and keep talking with you more because you're not the only one that 
thinks and feels this way, and I'm concerned for you, and I'm concerned for others, and I want to help, and I want to be there with you to talk about this with you. Uh, is that okay? She said, yeah. I said, okay, good. Thank you. And she picked her feet up, pulled out her phone, went back to her phone. That was it. I went, oh, whew, okay, she didn't ostracize me. I'm good to go. I say that story because I think it's, in, I think it's true of all of us. I, I think that we, we think about God and we react about God and we do so in our minds and in our hearts. And so she doesn't know I'm talking about her. And there's others out there that I hear the same kind of thinking and reasoning, and I have the same kind of thinking and reasoning, but I've also learned that God and His Word is, there's something about it. Now, as I tell you this, I st I'll share you one more little story, then we'll move on. And that is, I struggle because a part of me being up here as a pastor and dressed in all of this, it's like I'm the expert, and I'm not, but I always think in my mind, in my heart, I'm supposed to be the one that teaches people, tells people, convinces people, uh, uh, pressures people, pushes people to believe God and to believe His Word. But I'm starting to think that's really not my job. It's not. I'm not supposed to be up here, and my job isn't to somehow, some way, get into your brain and into your head and turn on that switch that says, God loves you. God forgives you. God cares for you, and God wants to be a part of your life. As much as I want to be able to do that, <laughs> it's not my job. It's God's job. That's what makes God, God. If God is the one who changes lives, God is the one who has to do that. If God is the God who touches people's lives, God is the one who does it. But here's the kicker. He does it through each of us. That's why Jesus came. That's why Jesus was baptized. That's why Jesus preached. That's why Jesus healed. That's why Jesus listened. And when people would walk up to him in the middle of the street and bow down and say, if you're willing, you can make me clean. That's why Jesus would reach down, look him in the eye and say, I'm willing, be clean. There's something to God and his word. When he speaks... When his word is heard or spoken, it touches us. Just like it's God spoke his word and light began to exist, God speaks his word today and light doesn't now come upon the world. God's light goes into our hearts and our minds and it illuminates us with faith. And as it does... It helps us to understand so we can believe. You maybe heard a version of this story before. Uh, one day, pastor comes walking up to church to, and into the church front doors, and in the foyer, there was, a, uh, there was Oli, and Oli was standing there with his hands behind his back, and he's looking at a, a plaque on the wall. It has the American flag on each side. and has a list of all of these people, and he's looking at it, and the pastor walks up to him. He looks like Oli's being very solemn, and he, says, and he stands next to Oli, and after a minute or two, he looks at him and says, Good morning, Oli. Without looking at the pastor, he says, Good morning, pastor. What is this? And he says, Oli, that's a memorial for people who have died in the service. And he keeps looking. And he nods his head in acknowledgement and approval. He keeps looking. For a while, they both just stand there. 
And Holy keeps looking, and finally, he turns to the pastor, and he says, Pastor, which service did they die in? The 8 a.m. or 10.45 a.m.? Do you see how we chuckle? We look at Oli's perspective, and we're kind of going, Oli, you're not getting it. They died in the service of the country in one of the services that we have. But you know what's funny? He's actually right. You know, he's, he's going, oh, man, I wonder what service should I go to, the 8? Who died the most? How many people died in the 8 a.m. service? How many people died in the 1045 service? Because that's which one is going to help me determine which one I'm going to. His concern is valid because every service that we come to, God comes to us and we begin in His name, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And as we do, we remember our baptism. And as we do, we remember we were washed and made clean in the waters of baptism. We were united with Christ in His life and in His death. And we were united with Christ when He rose again from the grave. And because Jesus died and is risen from the grave, we too die daily to our sin and the power of sin in our lives. We daily die to it. We daily realize I'm a sinner. And that without God's help, I'm going to die. I'm condemned to death. No hope. But God speaks words of power. And He resurrects in us the truth. But in Christ, you have risen from the dead. You are dead to sin, and you are alive to God in Christ. Consider this. Put it in your head. Put it in your heart. Put it in your mind, and don't let hell, sin, yourself, the world, take it away. Consider yourself dead to sin and its sentence and its judgment and its wrath and consider yourself a child of God always loved by God there's nothing that you can do to make God love you less there's nothing you can do to make God love you more because you're united with Christ in his death and in his resurrection why? How can, we, how can I share with you, you, this with you with passion? Because God says so. His word says it. His word declares it. Whoever puts their hope in the Lord will not be put to shame. Psalm 31 something. Whoever puts their hope in God will never be put to shame. Consider yourself no more trapped by your shame, your guilt, and your unworthiness. God has declared you victorious. Now, I know I just tried to convince you with my energy. But if I would take a step back, you were created. We were created. We lost the image of being connected with God. And God, through His Word, His almighty, powerful Word, just made us born again. And if you missed it in the confession and absolution, and if you missed it in the sermon, and if you missed it in the story, don't miss it at the table. Because he comes yet again with body and blood. And if you miss it at the table and you just come up there and you take bread and wine and you don't realize this is Jesus' body and blood, go home, open up the Word, read the Word, get, gather in fellowship with other believers, pray for one another, tell each other what all your struggles and troubles are going through and how God, and then another passage of how God loves you and forgives you and how it's really hit you. Because these are the ways that God speaks His almighty word 
and he blesses us. I don't care. Take your choice. Saying, all right, pastor, it's enough. Move on. Okay, it's enough. Move on. Let's go to the table so God can bless us, strengthen our faith, and help us to keep considering we're dead to sin and its power and its condemnation. And we are now alive to God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Our creed. I think. Pretty sure. No, because we said the creed already. Our offering. 